This is the Gary uh, on material spirituality um, and your frustration with those that maintain some sort of spiritual idea or interpretation. It's like this. I'm, I'm not trying to convince you to see differently. I'm trying to convince you that it's possible uh, to interpret these people in a way that you could really ought to be able to tolerate. And at the same time, I think I'm going to describe what's going on in this situation. The situation being a transition from a theistic type of philosophy in the world's mainstream to a more secular, uh, atheistic interpretation. But the Greeks said that the sun was pulled across the sky by a god. Okay? by a chariot, driven by a god, to be specific. And it's as if you, upon discovering that that is not true, you've discovered that all those gods were bullshit. It's as if you said, therefore there is no sun. But we say, well, there is a sun. And you say, okay, well, there's this light in the sky, but, you know, you know, it's, it's not um, an amazing godlike thing. And there's nothing amazing about it. And we're like, no, the sun is still amazing. It still gets to be amazing. And you're like, no, there's not going to be an amazing explanation. We've already determined it's not going to be God's. And it's as if, you know, the only amazing or magical, if you want, explanation of it would include God's. There are a lot of ways of looking at the sun as amazing. I think it's amazing and the nuclear processes that go on in the sun, we still can't reproduce here. And it's amazing, and to the degree that we can, in a limited way, reproduce them. You know, we do know that they're pretty amazing. It's, it's matter turning into energy. Uh, that's an amazing thing. You, you can be mystical or just in awe of something like that. The phenomena of the sun remained an interesting and remains still an interesting phenomena even once the gods were taken out of it okay and consciousness is the same way you know we have decided that consciousness can't be explained by god putting it inside us so right away we know that the consciousness is not going to be a separate kind of thing that can just be painted on to uh, a material thing by some god. That was a lame uh, explanation. Understandable, considering we're just animals and we're coming from animal understandings, uh, just primitive, whatever sort of works, you know, perspective. But still kind of a, a silly uh, idea. So we figure the consciousness is a part of the body somehow. Now it's, it's a property of the body. It emerges from from the way the pieces go together, just like uh, a clock's ability to tell time, it just emerges from the way the pieces are put together. And, you know, who knows what, what it's going to turn out to be, but it's still amazing like the sun. It's still there. Consciousness is still this incredible energy source. Uh, all of our terms about human energy, motivation and intention, uh, are the assumptions about all of our abilities to decide things. These are, all come back to consciousness, you know, questions of will. It's, it's, there's a lot of energy there. You know, even without gods, uh, especially without gods, it requires a pretty interesting explanation. Whatever the explanation is, I can just vouch for that it's going to have to be pretty interesting. All of this energy, this phenomena, however it's explained, is going to be interesting because the phenomena itself is still interesting. You know, the phenomena of the sun was still interesting even once we knew it wasn't God's, but we didn't know what it was instead. And, you know, that's not a very abstract metaphor. I mean, this was the case. A lot of the ancient Greeks knew that the gods were just myths and tales, you know, social phenomena. Um, and they started to look at things like the sun in a physical way. You know, the the uh, natural philosophers did this. 
And they looked at the world in this naturalistic way. And they didn't know what the sun was, but they still thought it was damn amazing. And all the more so now that it wasn't just wrapped up with some simple child's fairy tale to explain what it, what it was. It was going to be much more interesting to get a um, more realistic idea of what it is. And in the end, the people that study the sun feel very fondly towards it. You know, they love it. It inspires them still today, even though it's just a fiery fusion uh, fission reactor. It's just a big nuclear reactor. Just a big nuclear. Well, that's pretty damn amazing, a nuclear reactor like that. And they have a lot of fondness for that. And I dare say they probably feel more fondly for what the sun really is. You know, they're more accurate picture of what it what it really must be like than a lot of ancient people that just thought it was a you know a god. Gods were doing all these things, pulling, doing a lot of the heavy lifting of nature, and big deal. You know, I, I think that they probably cared less about that god and any worship that that god got was a lot less sincere than the love that a a, a solar scientist gets from studying a physical phenomena. So it's as if you want to rob the beauty and mystery of these things because there's no gods. And to do that, I would have to believe that beauty and gods are related. And I don't. Okay, I don't. I think gods, if anything, get more ugly overall than, than beautiful. But that's a personal decision, some personal idea. I mean, some gods have beauty associated with them as well. Basically, they're separate things. You know, if they're mixed, it's at right angles. And uh, taking a god out of an amazing, beautiful phenomena does not make it less beautiful nor less amazing. And to the degree that it's magical because we don't understand uh, the nuts and bolts of something, you know, it remains magical. I mean, when you took the god explanation out of how the sun moves across the sky, it actually became more magical for a while until we caught up and, you know, figured out the nuts and bolts in terms of a non-theistic interpretation. So... I think if you saw this, you would understand why people like uh, like Thou Art That are enraptured and in love with the beauty of this natural universe.